What's up everybody, thanks for tuning in. If you saw my video last week, you know I talked a lot about the Bimmer Geeks Pro Tools software, kind of a high level overview on how to use it, how it works, where to find different things. Um, and you might be able to tell I'm recording this video again on, on the same day that I recorded that, but I wanted to split it into two because that video was focused more on how to use the software. And then today, this video is focused on actually using it and making changes, coding changes to your car to get the car to operate in a, in a different way than how it might have come from the factory kind of customize it to your own personal taste and uh, get it to do some really cool things so today we're talking about my favorite things that I've coded to this car the best things that I've done uh, things that I really kind of enjoy in my everyday driving with it it's like all these little things that have made a big difference and kind of add up to, to make a different experience and kind of get rid of some of the, the little annoyances of the car and improve some of the things about it. So we're gonna dive into it and talk about a bunch of the things that I've coded to this car. So if you didn't see my video last week talking about the different tools that I'm using for this, quick overview how to use them, go check that out. But a quick recap, I'm using the MHD Wi-Fi adapter for the E-Series BMWs. I have this Amazon Fire tablet that I got for cheap. And I'm running the Bimmer Geeks Pro Tool software on the tablet to do all of the coding. If you're interested in any of this stuff, I will have it linked down in the description below where you can go check out where you can get it for yourself. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you that I've already coded to the car, but that I think is such a cool thing that you can do is the Euro spec adaptive headlight operations. Basically on the American cars, all the headlights can do is move up and down and level according to how the pitch of the road is up and down, and they move side to side according to the angle of your steering wheel. Again, if only if you have the adaptive headlights. But what you can do is you can enable the Euro adaptive headlight operation, which is really cool. I'll throw up a graphic that shows you exactly what it does, but it basically uses your speedometer to measure, to see how, how fast you're going and change the angles at which the headlights point according to that. Basically, if, if you're going lower speeds, the headlights will point kind of out more, out to the side, so you can see things that are out, out on the side. If you're going at higher speeds on the highway, they'll point further ahead, straight ahead, so you can see things that are farther out at you traveling at higher speeds. It's a really, really cool operation. It was something that once I coded in, I noticed like an actual difference as I was driving around. Um, I think it's really, really cool. And you code it in by going with the Bimmer Keeks Pro Tool software, you have to go into safety, and then the coding is in the footwell module. And then you click on footwell module, you go to coding, edit coding. And once your coding options pop up, I believe you have to go over to the expert function on the Pro Tools stuff because that's it's not one of the popular items that they list. But these will load up in a second. I'm not going to make a backup because I'm not doing the coding right now because I've already done it. And then the easiest way to get to it is you hit the search button. And the, one of the great things about the Pro Tool software is how you can search it. But you just do AHL2, and that's the code for it. And there it is, AHL2 enable. They don't have a description for it in the Pro Tools, but that's fine. All you have to do is hit down. Mine's already enabled but you would click enable and hit finalize. It'll code it to the car and you'll be good to go. It'll start operating like that as you're driving around. So again, that's a really, really cool one. How you know that that's working, and I'll put up a clip. When you start the car, you'll see your headlights do their auto leveling thing, and then you'll see the driver side headlight start slowly angling and pointing out to the left side, and that's how you know that they're defaulting to the Euro spec headlight operation. The next one that I'll go through is another one that I found really helpful is the automatic headlight sensitivity. So I found on this car that the headlights would turn on when they're on the automatic setting. They would turn on when it was still perfectly bright out, and like the headlights would just be on. And it really doesn't matter, but I think the car looks better when it's just the daylight running lights with the angel eyes is on. So you can actually go in, change the coding to give you an option to adjust the sensitivity of when those headlights get turned on when they're in the automatic setting. So this one's a little bit more complicated because you have to code a few different things instead of just one. But basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna enable a menu in your cluster screen in order to adjust those settings. So how you do that is you go into interior and you go into cluster, which is the combi. And then again, you go to coding, edit coding. 
So these are the four things that you need to actually, it's actually five, that's my bad. There's five things that you need to code in. So it's this MMI ENA, MMI ENA, RPA, uh, this German for light auto operation, something like that. You code these four things to active, and I'll show you just the easiest way. I'll do the MMI ENA PIA. So again, the easiest way to do this is to search. I'm gonna go to the standard section because I think that's where they are. Hit the search button, a little laggy, and then I'm just gonna search for MMI. And look, there, MMI ENA PIA, RPA was the second one. So it would just be those two things. You would switch those to enable, and then you would go and find the other three things and hit the, switch those to enable and hit finalize. It'll code those in. Once that is coded in, you're going to go to your BC menu using the turn signal stalk. So you just flip this up and down to get into your BC menu. And what that coding will have done is enable an additional menu in here that's going to look like that. So the key with the check mark, you select that one, and then you just wanna scroll down until you get to this icon. So the headlight automatic icon, you select that, and then you can pick the sensitivity. The first one down here is the least sensitive. You select that one, and that shows you that your headlights are going to turn on with the least amount of sensitivity to how much light is outside. All right, so that one's been coded to the car. We're still in the combi, the cluster module doing coding there. And you can see in the popular section, here's another very popular option. It's the digital speedometer. I currently, again, already have it enabled, but it's usually disabled on these cars. You just switch it enabled, finalize, and then you get your velocity, it says V equals, and then you get your actual digital speedometer, again, on that cluster screen, so you can have that directly in front of you instead of just having the analog gauge. That's a really cool, really popular one that's also in the same section. So now we're gonna to switch to a different module for some different options. We're gonna to go to safety and we're gonna to go to CAS, car access system. And again, we wanna edit the coding in here. And this is where another couple popular ones are. So comfort closing with the key and the fob. Basically what that does is it allows you to close the windows holding down the lock button on your key, or if you were to insert the key into the actual slot on the door, that'll also close the windows, the sunroof. If you have a convertible, you can do that where it'll close the top. That's usually not enabled from the factory. The BMW key will let you open the windows, but you have to code in the closing. This is where you would do that. Also in the cast coding section is another really, really cool one that I like a lot, and it's closed windows and sunroof with rain. So basically what that does is it uses the rain sensor that usually operates the windshield wipers, and it uses that sensor where if you're out driving and your windows are open, your sunroof is open, and it starts to rain, that rain sensor is then going to notify the car and your windows and sunroof will start to close because your car has noticed that it started to rain. Again, this isn't something that comes from the factory like this. You have to enable this setting here in this coding menu. So next I'm gonna show you a couple of different options in the FRM, the footwell module. So that's still safety, footwell module, edit coding. And when you get into the coding here, Big one, popular one, folding mirrors via fob. So again, this isn't something that comes from the factory with the car, but you can enable this option and you can fold your mirrors in when locking the car with the key, when locking with the comfort access, doing any sort of stuff like that, fold in the mirrors. I have it set up so there's a slight delay where I hold down the button for a second and then the mirrors close in. If I just tap it, the car would lock normally. Another cool one in here is fogs and high beams. So the car defaults that if you're driving around with your low beams on and your fog lights on, and then you turn your high beams on, your fog lights turn off. And then when you turn your high beams off, they'll turn back on. With this, you can enable it so those fo the fog lights are always on. Those are nice because they help see you kind of down low and out to the sides a bit more when you're driving at night. All right, and then the last one that I'm gonna show for today is gonna be in the entertainment section, and then it's going to be in the radio system. 
You go to coding again, of course, edit coding. And this is where you can find a lot of things for the iDrive screen, a lot of the coding for that. So you can do video in motion here. So if you were to have something playing on there, usually that turns off when um, when you drive when you start driving the car and start moving. You can enable this so things that will stay playing on there even in motion. But the big one for me was this one, the legal disclaimer. So you know that whenever you pop in the car, you start it up, you have to always acknowledge that iDrive legal disclaimer that pops up. It's so annoying, you have to click it every single time. You code in here and you disable that. So that does not pop up any longer and your iDrive screen will go straight to this. It'll go straight to the main menu instead of having to click on that legal disclaimer every single time that you start up the car. So that about wraps up all the ones that I wanted to cover. That's a quick high level overview of just the, the most popular ones, the most common things that people code to the car, some things that I've found really nice to have coded to the car myself personally, um, and then also some really cool things. Like that, that Euro headlight thing, not a lot of people talk about that. Most people like online reading on the forums coding stuff, don't know about that option, that feature, and it's made a big difference for me while driving. I think it functions much, much better than um, how the normal headlights function. Uh, it's, it's a great feature. I'm really glad that I found out about it and coded it in. Uh, would highly recommend that one. So yeah, that's gonna be it for today. That's the quick overview, most popular coding things. If you have any questions, as always, shoot me a message, drop a comment down below. If you thought this was helpful, if you thought this was cool, please like and subscribe. Um, I'm gonna have some more videos probably on the coding topic. I'm not sure exactly what we might be getting to a bit more um, complex things next time around again that Bimmer Geeks Pro Tool software is really really powerful you can do a whole lot with it um, for example if you were to like retrofit things um, you can adjust a vehicle order and code in new things that didn't come on the car in the first place it's really really cool um, I might release a video coming soon um, talking more about some more advanced things other than what we were talking about today which is pretty entry level um, let me know if that's an interesting thing for you and uh, I can work on making that video but again that's gonna be it for now uh, we'll see you next time more stuff coming soon all right take it easy peace